What's the crack, lads? Let's get straight into it. We have got three Real Madrid epics, or legends, whatever way you want to call them. We've got big time Raul, Sedarf, and Figo as epics. So I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest, lads. I'm a little bit disappointed with these cars. I'm gonna show you why in just a second, depending on how you train them up. I think these cars, apart from Raul, Sedarf and Figo are not not like top, top tier. Um, we're going to get into it, obviously, we are going to start with Luis Figo. Now, there are a couple of different versions of Figo on the database, and I'm going to show you that in a second, um, but we will get to this one now, right? So obviously, he's got standard form, which is a bit of a pity, and Figo's player skills, man, like, he does have scissors faint, he does have soul control, he does have cut behind and turn, but he doesn't have heel trick, he doesn't have double touch, and for a winger, I think even though he can play pretty much any position here, and any formation and suit any formation with his playstyle proficiency of 90 and all. I, I just feel like his his card is a little bit kind of all over the place. Higgledy piggledy, man. It's just kind of I don't know, it's neither here nor there, right? I'm giving a load of analogies, but um it's it's just something about it that I don't like because he's got like, yeah, he's got some nice dribbling stats, right? But then he's also got first time shot and long range curler, one touch pass, way to pass and pinpoint crossing. He's also got early crosser here. So he is kind of like a perfect winger that can cut in, shoot, pass, dribble. He can do everything to a really high level. But I just feel like with the way that V2.4 is at the moment, I feel like you need to pick either one or the other. I don't think you need an all-rounder in these out wide positions. I'm going to be doing a video on that. I'm working on it for the last maybe three weeks. And obviously V2.4 um, kind of changed a couple of things with the meta and stuff. But I do feel like with Figo here, when you train him up, right, there is obviously multiple ways that you can train him up. We have him up here on eFootball DB. He's got really, really good dribbling, ball control, you know, acceleration, stamina, balance. Everything looks perfect. You can play him as the perfect link up man on the wing. You can take on players. But then if you look a bit deeper at his stats, right, and you look a bit deeper at his actual individual stuff here, like even when we max out his dribbling with nine progression points here, we still only have 82 tight possession, which is going to be a bit of an issue when we're dribbling, especially if you dribble a lot out on the wing. Like I like to dribble very, very tight to the player's uh, foot and then explode away, like with Dembele or what, like with Cavaradana or like with Mudrik or one of the new players, João Felix, um, even in a central position. Now, I do think that this is also an issue if you bring Figo in more centrally into an attacking midfield role where he can play as well or as an NSS type figure that's just going to sit back because he does have the dribbling, he does have the acceleration and the balance to play there, but he doesn't have the passing then. So you do have to kind of decide what way you want to train him up. I think his best alternative is probably to actually take away the dribble in a little bit and leave it at 80 there with the tight possession and use him as a right midfielder. Use him as a crossing winger, which I wouldn't have said that Figo... I suppose they've kind of measured Figo well because he wasn't blisteringly fast like, you know, Cristiano Ronaldo was when he burst on to the Portuguese side. Um, or as direct, Figo was all about kind of like, you know, patient dribbling and kind of like methodical dribbling of where he was going to go with the ball. Very good football brain. But I do think they've captured it well. I just don't know, will it suit the way that V2.4 is at the moment? I mean, if we leave seven points into dribbling there and we leave the de dexterity at 10 and the lower body at, or at 11, we could pump in a couple of more stats in there to get his lofted pass up to 85. To be honest, we probably don't even need 90 stamina and 85 speed. We could pump in another two into passing there to bring him on par with one of the, some of the better crossers of the ball in eFootball v2.4 at the moment. But yeah, just slightly, there's something about his card that I would have liked to have seen a couple of more dribble-centric player skills. Like, obviously we do have the one-touch pass and the weighted pass, so I think that you do need to pass with him a good bit and pass and move and touch. And his AI will be good because Figo's always is. But yeah, there's just something about him I'm not really 100% kind of... Um, sold on yet so let me know what you guys think i'm a slightly bit disappointed with that sadoff card um you know because i when i saw these first when they were on the database i was like yeah i'm definitely going to spin for those next up we've got sadoff uh one of my favorite players growing up as well now this guy is going to be very 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 good 
because he's got interception, blocker, fighting spirit, slide and tackle, but then he's also got one touch pass. So if you've got one touch pass, interception and blocker, as well as fighting spirit in V2.4, as well as unwavering form, as well as going to be locked on a B rating for his live update, you're going to have a monster in your hands, lads, trust me. He's going to be an absolute beast. He's got a nice height to weight ratio as well, which means his motions and his animations will be nice. And he's just going to get up and down the pitch. Now, slight concern again with Sadarf. He's not like... I would, I would say that Sadarf is definitely not as good as the Davids that they released a couple of weeks ago. And I don't think he's as good as the likes of Makalele or Vieira in central midfield from a defensive point of view. And I'll show you why in a second. But you can train him up to be a monster. And he's a very unique player. Um, and look, it's Sadarf, man. He's an absolute monster. Loved him at AC Milan uh, as well. He was, he was a tank. But yeah, when we do train up Sadarf here, this is the version that I think is probably best for him. I do think you need to pump up a lot into defending. Now... The key to a player like this that plays box to box, I will be doing a video on play styles. I know I've been saying it for weeks, but I will be doing it. The key to a box to box player is to keep his offensive awareness and defensive awareness as even as possible, right? A lot of players, you can't achieve it because they're more defensive than attacking or, or vice versa. But Sadorf has the perfect balance here of 77 offensive, 77 defensive awareness. So he's got exactly where you want it to be. On top of that, you also then need to keep a balance between his ball control, his passing, and his stamina. Because obviously you're going to be getting up and down the pitch a good bit. His 79 and 74 speed and acceleration, a little bit slow, little bit slow. I think that obviously, you know, the likes of Makalele is going to be blocking a lot more interceptions and balls. But obviously, Sadov has a bit more about him dribbling-wise and passing-wise. So they're kind of different players. It's very unfair to compare Sadorf. Um, You know, I mean, you can only compare him with the other version of Sadorf that they released, which was this guy, which is actually slightly worse with 38 levels to go. This, is, this guy's got 32 levels to go. But you can see the difference there, especially in the defensive stats, in the defensive engagement. And I do think that that will make a, a, a key difference to this to this player now of course if you are fairly set and you're playing two dmfs or you don't need him defensively obviously his ai playing style and his player skills will lock in um and they'll help out so you actually could you know take away a lot of these maybe just give him two into um defense if you wanted to bring that up or maybe three into defense instead of nine and then you can actually turn him into a, quite a beast um if you want to have him more you know offensive like you could put a few more into dexterity definitely a few more into dexterity there and then you can also bring up his speed to 80 and stamina to 97. Or you could take this down and you could actually just leave him that he's not going to be, um, you know, like taking the ball forward at all times. It's just going to be more kind of like an engine man mid in midfield. And you could try and get up that tight possession to 70 if you want a more attack based Sadarf, right? But yeah, slightly kind of, again, he, ki he falls into a lovely, lovely kind of role if you are starting off and you want a dominant center midfielder. I just think that there's a lot of players that stack up very well to Sadarf here. And then last but not least, we have got big time Raul, right? So he's got excellent stats, excellent stats, sound like Mr. Burns. He has excellent stats, lads, right? 91 offensive awareness. He actually surprised me with his stats here. Dummy runner, 31 levels to go, um, unwavering form, brilliant player skills, first time shot, chip shot control, uh, cut behind and turn, acrobatic finishing, amazing run, incisive run for the play styles. Um, you know, speed 80, but acceleration and balance in the 88 and 85 stack category, which is very decent. Ball control, let down again by tight possession. And as I said to you, lads, right, with V2.4, I think tight possession is a massively important stat. They've done something with it in V2.4. I'm going to do a video on that as well, um, because a lot of people kind of ignore dribbling stats for centre midfielders and even attacking midfielders when they were boosting their players or training their players. But I think that Raul could be could be meta, man. He's very, very good. He's got 88 finishing. And of course, he stacks up very well. You always know a player trains up well when it's, you know, done in four, six, eight, or 12 uh, increments there, right? That you don't have to go like nine into shooting. It's just six or eight. Um, and it keeps it balanced. Because obviously, when you're training players, it takes one point to get, you know, one up to top four. And then it takes two. And then from then on, it takes three and then four and then five. Um, so yeah, I mean, that is a, that is a key thing to look at, but I do like that stat, uh, setup of him. Now you could actually, if you are a good finisher, you could leave that at 86 and that would definitely be more than enough, um, to be able to score a lot of goals in him. And you could actually boost up dexterity one more to get the 92 and 89 acceleration with the balance 86, but it depends your play style. But yeah, um, let me know your thoughts on it, lads. Are you going to spin or skip? 
I will be back quite soon with more videos. Um, hopefully do a live stream today as well. And if not, it will be Friday the 24th that we do a live stream. So let me know if you're going to spin or skip. Let me know if you're disappointed or happy. And I will talk to you in a bit. Peace.